I don't know if you guys remember this, but a few years ago, right, there was this guy, like a contemporary artist who popped up on the scene who everyone was talking about. Because, again, um, having, having uh, maybe you guys don't know my history, but having studied at a very famous and illustrious art university here in the UK called Centro St. Martins and just being, you know, an avid um artist myself from the time I was in school and whatnot you know I went to a pretty decent art school when I was in college um you know won lots of competitions all that sort of blah 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 shit um I just follow art in general I go to the private views um you know I go to galleries all the time museums all that kind of good stuff and in general I kind of keep myself abreast all the news and one of the places I keep myself abreast is a website called Artnet and I remember a few years ago Artnet Art Forum a place that I was meant to intern at a few years ago, but that kind of didn't work out. But that was a funny little experience. I'll probably explain another time. But there was a time period, I think early 2000s, maybe around then, maybe a 2005 period, that this guy's name popped up. Or 2005, 2010, I don't know what time. Anyway, this guy's name popped up called um, Christian Rosa. And everyone was kind of talking about him like the next prodigal kind of superstar contemporary artist, right? Um, he had a very, what would you say it? Uh, would you call it mirror? I'm not because it mirror. I don't know what, how do you call his style, but he had a very kind of contemporary style that you would have thought would have done really well. And again, he was commanding high prices and kind of auctions and shit, and just being like associated with the right people, right galleries, right representation. He just seemed like there's only one way up for him, in it, right? Especially how he looks and stuff. You know, cool kid, da da da, -da <clears throat> handsome guy. And then for whatever reason, it went quiet or I haven't really heard nothing about him for a long time. And I think I just found out why. So this is courtesy of Artnet. This is a story from like early 21, right? Early 2021. Yeah, February. So it says here, everything's coming up roses. Um, it says two weeks, wet paint, um, wet paint, unspoil, unspoiled, a twisted and strange tale of a friendship undone by an alleged forgery. Sources did tell his allegations that a young artist, Christian Rosa, the guy up top, had taken an unfinished work from the studio of mentor and legendary Raymond Pettibon, who you might know, you know most recently for doing that collaboration with um, Supreme, but, you know, he's an amazing artist, he's on right. So, yeah, um, uh, had taken an unfinished work from the studio of Mentor and the legendary Raymond Pottibond, finished it himself and attempted to sell it for more than $1 million. Advisor with knowledge of the deal indicated that the work came close to selling, which makes sense. A large Pettibond wave painting for a million bucks would be a steal. That is unless the work itself was stolen, as multiple sources suggested. In the weeks that followed, nearly a dozen additional sources close to the birth of the artist came forward with with more information, snitches, about Rose's long relationship with Pettibon. Four of them indicated that based on the formation information that they have, um, rather than the isolated alleged incident, the talented wave painting may have been the tainted wave painting may have been one of the least free said to have been taken from Pettibon and later put on the market. So this guy again, like proper scumbag behaviour. This guy Christian Rosa, the guy that everyone was kind of billing up to be the next great art superstar, had you know befriended Raymond Pettibon again, a great artist in his own right. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was a lecturer at one of his guest lecturer or something at one of his universities. They built up a friendship, obviously, over time. Um, he then gets invited to hang out at his house, which is crazy, right? To go to Raymond Pettibon's home and live with him and be amongst his family and see his work and kind of just have access to that entire thing. Because I'd imagine being an artist especially and living in that it kind of basically it's not an artist residency but basically being able to learn from your mentor in that way must be awe-inspiring right just to be around him i can imagine for me like doing djing stuff if i got the opportunity to just like you know carry fucking dj harvey's bags or just to be around you know ricardo villalobos and why he's flipping kept sweats away from his forehead i'll be i'd love it right jeremy you know I mean? there'd be no um, inkling in my head where I want to take his headphones or whatever do you know what I mean I, I wouldn't give a shit I just want to absorb him as a person see how he kind of interacts with the crowd how he selects his tunes what he does with the you know with the set list like all that kind of stuff is why I want to learn visually and just through just being there right in proximity to him I wouldn't care about anything else or stealing drinks from his flipping rider that's flipping ridiculous so to even do that is a uh, high level of disrespect and then to go and do it and try and sell the works to profit off of it especially considering he is um on his way to being like the next great art superstar is really scumbaggy as well maybe his situation was that poor that he had to kind of do that he had no what nothing else to do his back was against the wall and maybe he has some addiction issues that he was trying to pay that money for i don't know but i think that's the real scumbag thing someone invites you into their home and then you go and steal stuff from their house and then try and sell it it's a like, yuck um, it continues, so the relationship between the two artists began over a decade ago when Petty Bonier, see, met Rosa 
um, through a artist Daniel Richter, uh, another really famous one, who was teaching the rising star at the Academie de Berlin Kunst in Vienna, Switzerland. Um, in 20, 2010, Rosa took a road trip out to West to visit Pettibon, crashed at his Venice Beach home, which doubled as his studio. A source present at the time said that in his recollection, Pettibon had works on paper around the studio and Rosa took some unfinished works from the studio, the finished works that he would later finish himself and offer for sale. In a statement to Wet Paint, representative of her in Pettibon studio said that the artist never purposely gave any works to Christian Rosa and had no knowledge of Rosa having the works. Fucking nuts, in it? But it also goes to show the... Pro, the, the what's, it, uh, what's it called? The proficiency or the... Pro, what's that word called? Um, how prolific somebody like a uh, Raymond Pettibon is that he's got so many paintings or stuff that hasn't been done just lying around right that are all worth millions and millions of pounds hundreds of thousands of pounds that he could have not noticed somebody taking a couple of his kind of greater works and kind of finishing them on their own accord it's just absolutely insane it just goes to show man like the highest level artists don't really care about the money that much I mean they're just about expressing themselves and getting their vision out there into the world and obviously um, this Christian Rosa guy took advantage of that that's the the real again the real scummy side of it according to sources the two artists maintain a relationship this super lazy super loose boozy casual informal trusting friendship as a source put it until Pettibon found that Rosa was allegedly trying to sell the works he took from the studio at that point the studio alerted authorities from the about the allegations which is how the case came to directed um, to the FBI the FBI has not responded to request of comment it's interesting that they went straight to the FBI and didn't talk I wonder if they spoke to him in general trying to pull him to one side especially if they had a close relationship like that or I wonder if it was such an affront I don't know. Again, I, 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 I'm, I've not done art to this level. Obviously, I've done it in my own way, my own creativity. I don't know how I would feel if someone did this to me. Would I go straight to the police or would I go in? Because I guess if you're Raymond Pettibon, you have that level. There are people, like it's not just him in it, right? He's kind of a brand, an organization. He's a company in his own right, right? He's got employees he's working with, that work for him or people that he's responsible for. So maybe there's that in the back of your head or just in general, just the affront, someone coming into your home and doing that is just like too much because if they're stealing artworks, what else are they stealing? Do you know what I mean? Your mind just keeps probably going to start racing. But I wonder why they didn't just put him to the side and speak to him directly. Maybe at that point it was already too far gone, um, but they went straight to the FBI. And of course, you know, now he, the guy's in big trouble. Another source suggested that it was an open secret that in Vienna that Rosa took on Pettibon's um, uh, from the apartment at one of Pettibon's former girlfriends and sold it to a collector in town. Jesus Christ. A different source directed me to a video of Rosa in what almost became a physical brawl with the collector. Stefan Schmitz, the opening of the AB in Los Angeles, but perhaps it was a story of another day. Really? A Pettibon studio declined to comment beyond that one statement in New York Gallery. did If I'm not mistaken... This Stefan Shimowitz, the kind of really prolific uh, collector guy who's kind of a, a little celebrity in his own right, wasn't he one of the people responsible for getting him his visa or something, right? And if I'm not mistaken, again, this is all like art, contemporary art gossip, but I'm pretty sure this Stefan um, Simo, Simo, Sim, Sim, Simchowitz was responsible for getting Christian Rosa into the United States in some regard. So maybe that was what the fight was about. Like, I got you here, I paid, you know, I... I I paid mad amount of money and again these people do that because they want to be patrons of the next great art superstar if you're responsible for getting this guy through the border helping his family out whatever it may be you know you're going to be part of a legendary story going forward but also if it fails you are then you know attached to somebody who was a legit fraud a legit thief do you know what I mean so I can understand why Stefan was really annoyed and he decided to fight him outside the iBid gallery in Los Angeles but I want to see that video I really do but anyway for Fast forward to today, look what's happened, courtesy of the New York Times. It says here, US charges once rising artists with a selling a Raymond Pettibon forgeries. Absolutely insane. This is one of these paintings I've seen in the back. Um, you know, he's not the greatest painter in the world, but you can understand why that kind of style in like those in that year in those years like 2010, 2015 would have been so popular and why everyone was thinking that he was gonna be the guy. And again, look how he looks, handsome looking dude, dress is pretty cool. It was kind of the next great art hoping it coming forward and how far his star has fallen, man. It says he yeah, had a message posted on the artist Ray Potter on Twitter account two years ago. He appeared to express his gratitude to two friends who had paid him a visit. Thank Thank you, Christian Rosa and Henry Taylor for coming by. Great artists and kind, genuine people, you made my day. 
by the time according to federal prosecutors mr rosa was actually involved in something that was opposite of genuine he was scheming to sell forgeries of pettibon's work in an incident okay uh, in an indictment announced on wednesday mr rosa was charged with wire fraud in the sale of four paintings that were purportedly mr pettibon's work and that were backed by certificates of authenticity on which rosa was accused of forging pettibon's signature oh my god a mr rosa who um indictment says also known as christian rosa weinberg swindled buyers out of hundreds of thousands of dollars and risked of new york arts legacy um through his forgery scheme says damien williams the u.s attorney in manhattan said in statement that's true in it you don't think about that as well it damages his obviously everyone associated with him gets tainted in some way shape or form in it so i can understand why they probably went straight to the fbi in that case mr rosa 43 had been living in california but fled the united states in february and remains at large <laughs> prosecutor said he could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted of the most serious charges against him reached on thursday the lawyer representing him on matter robert G um, robert gottlieb the kind of comment so he's left the united states i wonder where he's gone obviously he's from europe somewhere i don't know where um if he is in europe he's probably gone in it if they haven't found brown laundry by now who's you know in some national park somewhere chilling under a rock probably you know um dead already it's unlikely they're gonna find rosa in the middle again it's wire fraud again it's a big deal don't get me wrong but it's not exactly at the top of um i guess the police forces um you know things to get him i don't know what do you think i doubt he's gonna get found in europe innit unless he gives himself up mr pettibon could not be reached for comment on wednesday and representative david zimmer the gallery that represents him did not immediately respond to comments on thursday without commenting on the charges the head of the operations of mr pettibon studio said via email that the artist did not write the 219 tweet thank you rosa for the visit seriously it might have been a handiwork of a hacker perhaps mr rosa mr pettibon has a very particular style of writing especially writing tweets in which a very distinguished sense of humor he would never use common adjective like genuine or kind <laughs> lows the indictment offers of the following accounts of the events and charges starting in 2017 and continuing through last year mr rosa worked with others to sell four pieces which he falsely presented as mr pettibon's wave series i wonder if there's more series that he sold but people just not coming forward with it because part of the part of the thing with that art world right is obviously buying those great works from great artists and obviously having them in your collection having that clout being able to turn a profit in the future if you did buy one under the guise that it was a real pettibon and now you know it's a rosa forgery forgery sorry you don't want to really own up to it because you don't want your collection to be tainted either right it's going to damage you um the fact that you bought this underhand you know back channels and shit it's not going to look the greatest so you don't want to come forward and say anything and obviously mr rosa ain't going to say nothing because he pocketed the cash right he's not going to come out and say yeah i sold him and her one you just want to keep the money you don't want people to know you know you, you want money that you have to sometimes go account unaccounted for so there's probably more out there i would imagine so it says in 2018 mr rosa enlisted the help of an undefined buyer to arrange it all that buyer too man ooh, ooh, ooh. um to arrange the sale of the two of the four juice to a second um unidentified buyer as thanks for the first buyer help mr rosa gave the person another supposed way of serious painting again fakes so he's giving them fakes he's completing not for fakes well stuff is it a fake if you finish something i wonder if you used to go to a studio like you know a production house like you know a, a, a manufacturing place where they make balenciagas and shit and then you know they've got a runway collection there but they haven't finished it whether it's kind of seams you know labeling um steaming whatever it's not been finished and then you finish it does that automatically mean it's a forgery because i think a forgery is you copying something right base base level i don't know so that 2019 mr rosa exchanged emails with a friend about trying to find buyers for certain unnamed paintings in one of the emails mr rosa wrote they're asking about certificates how are we getting them at one point mr rosa's friend asked why the sales were taking so long mr rosa just responded that he wanted to find a buyer who would not resell the works at auction oh yeah true because then that would obviously bait up the whole thing i'm not trying to get it busted so that's why i'm taking longer mr rosa used the proceeds from the sale of two paintings for a down payment and mortgage payment in the house in california <laughs> <laughs> okay that's where it gets bad because if you're telling me he's got addiction issues like he's a coke addict or he gambles a lot or he loves prostitutes too much whatever sex addict then fair enough because i would imagine like you know already going to your flipping mentor's house and stealing his paintings is mad to me but then there'd be some sort of understanding if you were in really dire straits like you owed money to the albanian mafia or some shit people would kind of understand your position a little bit more or you had an ex secret family no one knew about living in the middle of flipping botswana or something who needed really need your help or in some war-torn country in europe or something right cool 
but just to do it so he can get a house in california considering that he was on his way to be famous and rich as well is just horrible and also goes to show that he wasn't in it for the right reasons because if you're an artist coming up and you're the next great superstar you're going to get a lot of patronage right you're going to get people that are willing to kind of pay for your keep right so basically they're going to pay your rent in like whatever city you want to live in to do your work they're going to fly you around um you're going to get a comped life you won't be a lot but you'll get fully comped out right someone's going to make sure you don't have to kind of work part-time in tesco's to support your art career but it's going to be a while before you actually see the big bucks so see before you see the big sales and plus you know the studios take a lot of money represented took a lot of money you know by the time you actually sell a one million dollar painting you might only get two hundred thousand after taxes and all that shit right it's not a lot of money but still once that starts going there's only one way it's always up right in that regard especially if you keep the level of consistency high you work um consistently well and you have the right connection representation you'd be perfectly fine but it goes to show that he wasn't in it for that he was in it for the money that's why he wanted to be the next great superstar which definitely under definitely explains his style of artwork right it's very just in it's very kind of i wouldn't say trendy but there's just nothing interesting about it he's not really an amazing painter in any way shape or form it's just stylistically to just look ready for like a contemporary home somewhere right um i also wonder if maybe even with this forgery thing does that increase the value of his paintings or or does it diminish it i'd say it increases it right the fact that he might go to prison the fact that he's on the run right he's doing a take a thing at the moment i think it actually increases the allure and the appeal that people would want him to have their works displayed in their home because it's a great conversation piece in terms of you know the relationship between an artist and his mentor um the scheming world of the art industry in the first place the pressures that are put on the artist blah de, blah 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 the case of forgery which a lot of people believe is quite rampant ramp him in art but people kind of turn a blind eye to it because of the money involved i wonder if that would do anything to it but again like it's you know it's no surprise that somebody of this level was only in it for the cash because like i say i only see these sort of works as somebody who would want to make a ton of money um on the auction level or on the resale level or on the gallery level because there's you know there's nothing really interesting or that amazing about the artworks that he's creating he's not really saying anything different if anything he's just kind of you know um it's, it kind of to me it looks like an ai generated piece of artwork especially for that time period it just looks like something that would fit perfectly then and you know again i i don't know like it it, it doesn't surprise me too much that he's in this kind of passer to be completely honest they continue this in 2020 um an unnamed buyer uh, after trying to help rosa sell the other works supposedly by petty bomb bought the two other forgeries as at, at issue in the indictment um, the scheme began to unravel when the website Artnet published an article about allegations that Mr. Rose had forged one of the paintings sold by the first buyer, which had been placed on sale in New York auction house. Dealers who saw the images of one of the paintings being offered to sell became suspicious when they noticed that there were seemingly strange yellow green blended into it. Normal cobalt blues, the Artnet article said, adding that the artist's signature scroll seemed to tad too polished. A day after the article was published, the indictment says Mr. Rosa emailed a friend and said, Secret is out. Less than a month later, Mr. Rosa left the United States. Uh, that's a great t shirt to put in it the, the phrase there the secret is out <laughs> less than a month later mr rosa left the united states a few months after that he sold the california house and tried to transfer the proceeds to sell abroad oh, what a dickhead mr petty bond 64 first game widespread attention 1980s and 1990s um by making album covers such as black fag the the Minutemen and Sonic Youth, his early pieces often mixed images of baseball greats, Hollywood stars, and superheroes like the bikers and gangsters. As his career progressed, he focused more on larger works. Some of his larger paintings sold for one million or more. Mr. Rose himself was once a rising star. The market has was work peaked in 2014 when one of his paintings sold at Christie's 2009. According to Art in the article a year later, Mr. Rosa, a familiar work sold of fucking hell. Okay, that's probably why he did it then. I didn't know that. You hear that? Um, the market for his work peaked in fall 2014 when one of his paintings sold at Christie's in New York for £209,000, right? Um, and then according to Artnet article, a year later, um, a similar work by Rosa sold at Sotheby's for only thirty grand. So quickly, that kind of style of artwork, again, uninspired, um, doesn't really say much. Um, again, it's just kind of made specifically to sell. Um, then when 
and sold only 30 grand a year later bruv so clearly his style was diminishing in some respects so then that probably kind of married up to the scheming of the artworks because he probably was living a lifestyle of somebody that was making 200 to 500 grand per month or per year and then he had to obviously then you know kind of go down to the lowly figure of only 30 grand per month so he obviously went to support that lifestyle by nicking those artworks but i can't imagine anything more scummy than that to be honest you know what i mean like going to someone's home and stealing something you know and then reselling it to buy a house is just like beyond scummy but yeah what a fall from grace for christian rosa um i doubt they'll find him um, I don't think there's going to be international manhunt for him considering what he did he'll probably live you know kind of keep his head down live low and probably maybe the guilt will eat him up and he'll walk into a police station and hand himself in over time but I really doubt the police are going to find him and arrest him somewhere I don't think so I think that time has already gone but maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong